Indiana, where that tragic accident occurred. This is the news conference live. Uh, Mr. Moorhead, the Sheriff Tom Grills of uh, Ripley County. Uh, Master Trooper Ben Baston was the investigator on this crash. He's present also. And Sergeant Mark Helms of the Indiana State Police is a crash reconstructionist. He's here. However, he is not in uniform. Uh, he was called out. So uh, when we get into the question, if there's a question that, that is asked that I can't answer that Sergeant Helms can, I'll just refer to him and, and then I'll relay it to you. So uh, with that, we will uh, go ahead and get started. I will uh, make a statement explaining the facts that uh, have been revealed so far in the investigation for the crash. And now I'll turn the podium over to Mr. Moorhead to make a statement on behalf of the school corporation. At uh, approximately 9.46 this morning, a 911 call came into the Ripley County Communications Center reporting a serious crash at the intersection of Fairgrounds Road and County Road 850 West, just west of Holton and west, uh, just west of uh, Osgood in western Ripley County. Uh, the crash investigation has revealed that a 1999 Dodge Ram 3500, one of these large dual-wheel pickup trucks, driven by 17-year-old Thomas D. Crawford of Dillsboro, was eastbound on Fairgrounds Road. A 1996 Ford F-250 pickup truck driven by 17-year-old Timothy C. Bowman of Osgood was northbound on County Road 850 West. As the two vehicles approached this intersection, it's a four-way stop, and the initial uh, reconstruction findings indicated that both vehicles failed to stop at the stop sign. And the F-250, uh, it appears, reached the intersection first, and the Dodge struck the F-250 broadside in the driver's door and both vehicles careened off to the northeast corner of the intersection approximately 100 feet. Killed in the crash was uh, Thomas C. Bowman, 17 of Osgood. He was the driver of the 1996 F-250. Oh, I'm sorry, Thomas, Thomas C. Bowman. Okay, the information I have is Thomas, is that? It's Timothy, it's okay, I have Thomas. I'm sorry about that, I'll have to change that. Timothy Bowman, 17 of Osgood. Uh, he was the driver of the F-250. Also killed was Jacob Vogel, 18, of Versailles. He was a passenger in the F-250. Killed was Samantha R. Hansen, 18, of Holton, and she was a front seat passenger in the 96 Dodge Ram. Injured in the crash was Thomas D. Crawford, 17, of Dillsboro. He was the driver of the Dodge Ram, and he was transported to Mark Murray Hospital in Batesville, and then transferred to University Hospital in Cincinnati with uh, chest injuries. Injured was Caleb M. Cumberworth, 15, of Holton. He was a backseat passenger in the 99 Dodge Ram. He suffered just a minor injury to one of his hands. He was transported to Margaret Mary Hospital in Batesville. Also injured was 15-year-old Kayla Adkinson of Holton. And she was also transported to Margaret Mary Hospital in Batesville, and I, I don't have information on her injuries at this time. All six of the individuals were students at South Ripley High School, and they were attending a, a Future Farmers of America function at the Hopewell Church, which was just south of the crash scene. And the crash, uh, of course, is still under investigation. So at this time, I will turn the podium over to Mr. Moorhead to make a statement on behalf of the school corporation. If that, after that, uh, we'll open it up for questions. Thank you, Sergeant House. This morning, the Future Farmers of America chapter at South Ripley High School participated in serving breakfast at the Ripley County Soil and Water Conservation Meeting for farmers at Hopewell Baptist Church. Particip participation in the breakfast was a school-approved activity. Students that participated re reported to the church at 6 o'clock a.m., and because this report time was prior to the start of the school day, they provided their own transportation to the event. Students were scheduled to, to participate in the event for the entire school day. Mr. Pat Holland, the FFA sponsor and South Ripley agriculture teacher, was present at the church in his capacity as FFA sponsor. At approximately 9.30 to 9.45, some students left the church. The accident occurred a short time after this. The accident is under the investigation of the Indiana State Police. South Ripley Community Schools provided grief counselors to students at the high school today and will do so as needed in the near future. Counselors will also be available to help any staff or parents. The South Ripley School community is deeply saddened 
by this tragic loss of life. On behalf of South Ripley Community Schools, we extend our deepest sympathies to all who are affected by this horrific event. Well, great questions. Well, uh, the superintendent uh, for the, for the, for the students, um, on heading back to school, do you know, or were they supposed to stay at the first level? The students were supposed to stay for the entire day at the trip. They were not on their way back to school at that time, to my knowledge. So they shouldn't have been driving anywhere? Um, that part is still under investigation to see exactly what was the purpose of them leaving at this point. Give us a sense of who these kids were and how devastating this is for the people at that school. It's, it's completely devastating to the people at the school. Um, these were great kids. Uh, they were doing a great thing today, participating in this community event. The FFA organization is outstanding at providing service to our community, and these were truly wonderful kids, and it's a deep loss for the whole school community and the South Ripley community as a whole. Any idea where they might have been going this I cannot uh, speak to that at this point as we are still in the process of gathering that information. I'm assuming the 18-year-olds were seniors, would that be correct? That would be correct. 17-year-olds? There was a junior. Yes. So, how's the figure? Was speed a factor in this act? And I, I went out to the site and I saw the, what these cars looked like, the vehicles looked like. Okay, Sergeant Helms, I, I spoke to him uh, just before the press conference started, and speed uh, could be a factor in it. The primary cause was the fact that they both disregarded the stop sign. Uh, is speed certainly going to play a part in the, the, you know, the devastation, the damage? So unsafe speed could be a factor, very well a factor in the crash. There's been no speed determination made at this point. Any reason why they would... They would I can't speculate. We're hoping, uh, I know that uh, Master Trooper Baston still needs to try to get a, a little better interview of the surviving passengers, and they may be able to shed a little light on what exactly was, was going on at that time, but at this point we don't know for sure. Who called 911? Uh, that I don't know. Sir, or, uh, Sheriff, do you know who may have called 911? Okay, we, we don't know. Yes. We heard a report that uh, possibly they were leaving the breakfast both at the same time, both vehicles, and they may have potentially been, been racing to see if we could get back to a main road first. Has that come up in your investigation at all? There again, that, that would be speculation on our part, so we need to, to check with the, the survivors to see if they can shed any light on that. What color was the, the Dodge and which one, the white or the red? The Dodge was white, and the, the F-250 was red. Can you factor, I mean, are the ice, icy roads? Roads were dry. Roads, roads were dry. And uh, I was out at the scene, didn't appear that there was any uh, salt or sand or anything that may have made uh, hazardous condition. Any indication of what you're Well, as is standard in all serious personal injury and fatal crashes in Indiana, the, the drivers are being tested, but at this point we have no indication that uh, drugs or alcohol is involved. Is there any indication that electronics may have been part of a distraction, perhaps, for one of the drivers? Uh, we haven't. There again, that's something that uh, uh, may be t determined when we get a chance to talk to survivors. But at this point, we have no indication one way or the other. The, uh, it's my understanding that both of the, uh, the two people in the F-250 were wearing their seatbelts, and they were both killed. And, and I believe the, the fatal uh, in the Dodge was wearing a seatbelt. Not sure about the others, but all three of the, the persons that were killed were wearing their seatbelts, as is the case from time to time. There's just such uh, force and, and devastation that a seatbelt can't save you. The Ford was headed west direction? The Ford was, Ford was northbound on County Road 850 West. And the Dodge was eastbound on uh, Fairgrounds Road. And the, the, the girl that died in the, uh, in the Dodge, she was sitting and, and where in that She was front seat passenger. They died on the scene? Yes, all three of the fatalities were pronounced dead at the scene. Can you, do you have a handout with the names and spelling and on it? Uh, I didn't make extras. I am going to send out a release, and I, I need to correct mine because I the, the name I copied wrong, but I will... I will see if I can get the names again and spell them out for you. Yes, yes. Okay. Timothy 
Norman. 17 of Osgood. He was the driver of the uh, Ford F-250. Jacob Vogel, V-O-G-E-L, 18 of Versailles. He was a passenger in the F-250. Samantha Hansen, Samantha R. Hansen, 18 of Holton. She was a front seat passenger in the Dodge Ram. Those were the three fatalities. H-A-N-S-O-N. Okay. Yes, yes, he was from Osgood. Uh, injured was uh, Thomas D. Crawford, 17 of Dillsboro. He was the driver of the Dodge Ram. Dillsboro. Dillsboro, D-I-L-L-S-B-O-R-O. Yes, 17. Caleb M. Cumberworth, 15 of Fulton, backseat passenger in the Dodge. And Kate, I'm sorry. Yeah, just like it sounds, Cumberworth. C, not again. Right, C-U-M-B-E-R-W-O-R-T-H. 15. 15. And Kayla, K-A-Y-L-A, Adkinson, A-D. K-I-N-S-O-N, 15, of Holton, uh, and she was uh, uh, in the Dodge Ram. And she looked at from Holton. Holton, H-O-L-T-O-N. Sorry, on the deceased, can you give the ages again, Bowman and so Bowman was 17, Vogel 18, Hanson 18. Uh, I would say they probably knew each other. They went to the same school and were part of the, the uh, South Ripley FFA, so I'm sure they all knew each other. Uh, do you know what activities these kids were involved in outside of FFA in terms of extracurriculars? There would be too big of a list for me to speak to right now, Mike. I can't I can't speak to that. So. Very active. Yes. These students were active. Did, with classes today, did you, were you all able, able to conduct classes today? Or? As you can um, imagine, it was an extremely difficult atmosphere, and we had a meeting with all students in the gym uh, to inform them of an accident. We were unable to confirm any details with students at that time, but wanted them to know that an accident had taken place. We did have a meeting with staff members as well to inform them that an, af an accident had taken place. Uh, we asked the staff members to watch over the kids today. Like I said, we had counselors on hand as well to help any students who were having a difficult time. And um, it is a very, very sad time and a very difficult time at South Ripley Schools right now. And our thoughts and prayers go out to the family, the families who are affected by this, and to the entire community as a whole. Sorry, to get out of the vehicles. That's Indiana State Police discussing the triple fatal uh, east of Osgood in South Ripley County, Indiana. Jeff Hirsch will